microphone a little closer. Sure. Now let's test if this is all right. It looks like it's all right. And uh, I'm going to put my microphone a little higher. Just going to test the feedback loop. Is it good? Is it good? It's good. All right. <clears throat> uh, hello, by the way. <laughs> hello. Hello, Internet. Hello, everyone. Um, I am going to um, talk with you about a few things uh, that I wanted to talk about because it looks like to me it's the good moment to talk about this. Um, it's the good moment to talk about some PHP updates because uh, the engine is going to have a major rework in the uh, in the months to come, and uh, I wanted to um, make an online presentation regarding everything. So, um, without further waiting, let's just um, go straight into the thing. Um, I'll just um, I'll actually just remove the. Uh, my regular Twitch um, decorations so that you guys don't care, okay? <clears throat> All right, let's go. So, um, what I wanted to talk about tonight is, uh, because it's the night right now in France, is um, PHP 8, because uh, it's not every day that we have a major version coming, you know? So, as far as I know, I remember PHP 7 going, um, live was only a few years ago <laughs> feel like it was yesterday already but you know time flies so yeah so uh i'm going to try to make an exhaustive presentation uh regarding everything that php 8 is going to offer and make a, a little tour around um, the world of php for a few couple of tens of minutes you know um so <clears throat> before we go further, um, I'd like to state a few things. Um, some data and sources contained in the slides are still subject to debate and uh, some changes might appear by the day this rolls out. We are right now um, middle July, July 20th. Um, by the time I made this talk, PHP 8 is not feature frozen, but it's very close to it. Uh, there are like I don't know, five to six RFCs that could be making it by the deadline of August the 4th. So I'm pretty confident that everything is fine into this. Some votes are not over, but looking at the votes, you know what the outcome will be. So um, I made some assumptions while building the slides and uh, yeah. So there are many many presentations on php 8 out there uh, especially from the core php team members uh, please do check them out before mine of course um, and even though uh, i think this is the latest by the time i made it because uh, no one is doing presentations these days um, i found slightly older presentations but <clears throat> considering php alpha just got released and the second alpha just got released by the day i did this actually uh, everything changes lightning fast. So I tried to write as little as I could on slide um, because, you know, minimal slides are the best. Um, but this is about source code, right? So there, there has to be some. So this blows up the slide complexity, but for which I, I do apologize in advance. But yeah, I didn't add a progress tracker to this presentation. But just to tell you, this is about 65 slides long including these ones and it's really hard to tell but php 8 uh, has a little more changes than php 7 even though php 7 had more major structural changes so sit back relax it's going to be cool and i hope you're gonna like this uh, introduction to those changes uh, one very quick word about me, uh, I'm what you would call a ninja, you know, I'm a web architect, lead developer, agile coach, uh, whatever you want to call me, to label me. Um, I have 13 years of experience in computing, mostly in web. I'm currently working in a software company called Neosoft in France. 
as you can hear from the French accent. Um, and I contributed very lightly, but still to some projects like PHP CS Fixer, uh, the Symfony documentation, Drupal, PHP Docs, uh, Composer websites, and uh, PHP Fig2, uh, the framework interoperability group. Um, so I'm currently working on the web development, so you can find me on GitHub, GitLab, and Twitter. You got the links on the right. Uh, and uh, the QR codes and I'm also if you are interested in it I'm also a photographer a musician so you can find me on Instagram YouTube Flickr 500px on cloud and all more this is not relevant here but I play a lot so I play Magic Gathering and Apex Legend at moments and so you find me on Twitch uh, this channel is usually dedicated to gaming but yeah and of course on Facebook Snapchat whatever you want find me in so if you want to get in touch feel free to do so you got plenty of ways to do so first let's give a few reminders um, about PHP. Um, starting with its name, PHP, everyone forgets, but this just means PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. Yes, it's a, it's a recursive abbreviation. Uh, that's really geeky, but um, that needs to be stopped for a second. Hypertext Preprocessor. That's exactly what PHP has been doing since the dawn of its existence in um, 1993, uh, actually. And that explains its utility the best. PHP is an imperative language, which means you describe the operations or the steps you want to execute. It's object-oriented, um, a little in version, in version 4, and it's fully object-oriented in version 5. The core engine has suffered major reworks through time. It's a language that is able to reinvent itself because it didn't have that much weight on the shoulders. For what, what I mean is it's fully open source. There's no company, no branding threatening its future, uh, which explains um, PHP's fragile ecosystem and massive online support at the same time. Uh, like. Stack Overflow is literally flooded with PHP questions. Um, so yeah, nobody's paid, really paid to work on PHP explicitly. So maintaining many versions and many different stuff in PHP uh, is a heavy constraint. But yeah, so uh, the fact that it's a hypertext preprocessor at, at, at the roots of it, I think explains and defines a lot of what PHP is as of today. Um, PHP became famous and taken seriously since um, companies like Facebook or Wikipedia um, just tried started using it as a core language. Um, you cannot ignore that Facebook's the largest website with registration on on the planet. Like they claimed recently, two billion active users. It's just amazing how large this company is. And <clears throat> yes, the the, the this app since still uses PHP more or less um, mostly HHVM and hack too but uh, as a core language so yeah in the case you would like to remember um, PHP emerged in 1993 for a gentleman from um, the northern territories of Greenland named Rasmus Lerdorf uh, who had the idea one day uh, of getting rid of compilation and boring pages because yes, back then in 1990s, you had to compile your backend and if it crashed, it just make more sick fault, whatever happens, it's really a nightmare to maintain and you can restart it easily. So uh, Rasmus just had an idea, the idea of just using something for his personal website um, an intermediary interpreter based on some compiled stuff that didn't crash so that the scripted language would have mistakes but they, they would be forgivable you know so it's just like a middleman not a, um, a very tied to the roots not very low level language PHP has an interpreter and it always has it comes from here so um, it emerged in 1995 on Usenet it was really noticed by the community back then because Usenet was like the time, you know, the ancestor of forums, which are the ancestors of Facebook, which are the ancestors of Twitter, Instagram and the rest. And um, back when people had less image, less videos and more text, I suppose. Um, and some people, uh, namely Andy Goodmans and um, ZF Zuraski, just tried to 
get attention on this and say we, we like we like this thing actually so they went into it and the community went to get some support bring some support to rasmus and of night seven php um was uh for the first time labeled php2 then it was completely rewritten things took off they built a company named zend which is the contraction of their names uh z-e-n-d uh, they need a, um, a version 3 of the engine, and then back into time, PHP 4 was born, um, middle 2000. Uh, middle 2004, PHP 5 with a new Zen engine was uh, completely rewritten uh, to be fully object-oriented and started being very industrialized. Then was the dark era of PHP, because um, people started to have much ambition for PHP 6. Um, mostly about having an icu based engine which means everything was supposed to be multilingual and gf8 uh, native not for the strings manipulation but also for the source code itself which means identifiers um, could be utf8 which would be insane <coughs> but it was so much work everything was so ambitious that php6 actually never got out but at the meantime some companies have really put too much investments on uh, open source companies like facebook so facebook started to develop their own stuff and they developed the hip-hop virtual machine and subsets of php to make it really faster because billions and billions and hundreds of billions of pages per day was not really what php was made for even though it was possibly to made for so there was some kind of a concurrency, you know, and uh, at some point, uh, the open source communities just say, oh, all right, let's just walk up. Uh, don't let this um, to the hands of a company that could drop it. We need to have PHP survived. So these guys gathered and they did a tremendous work back in 2015 on PHP 7, known as the Zend Engine 3, with a massive burst of like, let's just go with it a 100 percent increase in performance whatever you did and there we are five years later um 2020 with php 8 namely supposedly the zen engine 4 um the first alpha was released a few weeks ago and the second alpha was just released a few hours ago so didn't have a time to fully test it but yeah so that you know um PHP current version, major plus minor, is 7.4 uh, by the time this slide is made, <clears throat> and that won't move. Um, PHP now embraces the um, semantic versioning uh, principle, which means the cycles of backwards compatibility have decreased, and the release pace and the needs to upgrade have gone way faster than before. So every year in quarter four, uh, there's a new minor version, is out, uh, except if there is a major version. Um, minor versions have two years of support. So anything under PHP 7.3 will have a problem very soon, as you can see on this document. And going from 7.2 to 7.4 is actually quite easy, if not really easy. It's a little easier than 7.0 to 7.2 in general, but it's really easy. So. Right now, the development of PHP is reliable. You can know where and when to go since PHP 5. So don't be afraid anymore. Upgrading to PHP is way easier in general. So don't, don't be hesitating. Just do it often so that you linearize your work all through the time and you don't have to make it a huge, a huge topic with people who actually got the money when you're working on projects, okay? so. Uh, by, by the way, uh, PHP 8 is feature freeze on July 28th, and the vote ends um, maximum August 4th, I think. So all the slides could be close to accurate. I don't think I will have forgotten. I just uh, updated the latest slides as of today. So, okay, this was the PHP 10 line. I'd like to remind you, PHP is still approximately powering 79 if not 80 percent of websites today according to w3 wfc but the um, sources vary and it's basically the most pessimistic are 65 and the most optimistic 90 so uh, on the average i would say wfc is quite good on this um the rest of market shares is just goes for um java asp.net uh ruby um, Scala and JavaScript mostly, but there are tons of tons of, uh, of backend languages. So PHP is pretty stable in popularity. So if you look at the stack of the flow surveys of 2018, 19, and 24, and 2020, is about 24% uh, people 
who declared using it, um, while on the same time, for example, Java is on decline and Python or TypeScript or Kotlin as top risers, depending on sources. If you know the news and what we're doing right now, um, Python is mostly boosted by the AI and machine learning stuff and um, TypeScript by the needs of having transpilers from higher level language for front-end, um, rich front-end um, frameworks and Kotlin because it's a subset of um, superset of Java that is actually on steroids and removes a lot of um, problems that it could have. So yeah, PHP, as you can see, is made for the web and used on the web. If you just want to sum up this in another number, 31st, between 30 to 37% websites in the world are built over the shoulders of WordPress. WordPress was has been the leader of quick setup websites since the year 2000, where people just needed websites and just get the fuck off with the rest. So yeah, WordPress is the leader of them all and it uses massively PHP as a backend language in the core. It's one of the most uh, used and attacked, of course, applications worldwide. So it suffers security updates every week and uh, WordPress cycle development is pretty accurate and pretty efficient actually because it's amazing to see that since the year 2000 it never ever stopped going down you know so that's pretty good and if you want to know what projects you can expect on um, <coughs> the internet if you go to uh, contribution and run public repositories uh, the top projects on github right now um, star based, uh, I might miss some of them, are just frameworks, data generators, dependencies manager, HTTP clients, um, mailer interfaces, and unit testing toolboxes. You know, so as you can see, those, um, those top projects are very active, and those are the names you should watch if you are wondering what the PHP ecosystem looks like. And this is the same slide I'll always put in my talks. PHP will go on. Uh, there are very light odds that PHP disappears during the next decade because it suffers a constant evolution and modernization. Uh, the fundamental re-engineering of the language has been done several times and it is massively adopted by many hosting companies. And I'm not talking about the core ones like Microsoft Azure, um, Amazon Web Services or stuff that can particularly host any system. But um, I mean, the ones that are providing platforms as a service or um, shared infrastructures as a service so that you don't have access to everything, most of them are just by default offering PHP as a backend language. So yeah. Uh, especially right in Europe. Um, and all of this, despite three things. One, the modest size of the core team, but it's made of less than 100 people. Yes, it is. Uh, second, the lack of major investors on the market, even though some of them tried to take a hand on this. And also the improbable origins of a language, like I told you, was a language invited by, you know, some guy in the northern territories to just make some formulas so some forms on uh, his website um, but talking about improbable origins like, hello python hello javascript uh, and its subsequent internal career incoherences um, that means php is uh, could be looking incoherent for some people who might change very fast from language to language and I did a few slides addressing that point a few years ago, and we're going to see why, but PHP incoherences are just going to vanish very fast in the next days to come. So, I want to talk about some improvements. Um, just to save your brain, I'll start with the most important ones and the most impacting ones, and I will finish with the most detailed and specific ones that don't really need particular explanations okay so that if your brain gets tired it will hold on till the end it will not be um, losing grip until the end so okay so um, first of all we like to I like to, to show you some very major what I, what I call major improvements you will just um, set up the um, the cursor and adjust the cursor between major and minor improvement by yourself but yeah and also if you need more information php 8 release managers are sarah goldman and gabriel caruso uh, the voting for features like i said ends for ends on august the 4th all right let's go with the elephant in the room into the elephant in the room there is a new engine and that is hell of an improvement 
It is not as much as a redesign than the Hipful Virtual Machine or PHP Next Generation PHP NG rework, but wow. PHP now opens to very new, different apps. It is not as versatile as Python, for example, but yeah, it is going to be very much. Um, with JavaScript being trendy and its role in front-end and boosted by Google on steroids because Google invests lots of money in JavaScript, um, PHP definitely stands as a back-end language. And now when it's used in conjunction with um, foreign function interface and just-in-time compilation, which we're going to talk about, as a powerful calculation engine, this can be a game-changer. So think of batch processes that used to be complex. You're not afraid to do this on, on, on PHP anymore. So... Um, Whatever, any subsequent performance increase uh, is CPU saving, memory saving, heat saving, and therefore carbon emissions reduction. Remember, we are facing a pretty bad ecological crisis and anything can come, including for you on your code and from us. We can change part of the world thanks to this. So PHP engine also thanks to just-in-time compilation engine changes, but not only. I mean, Lots of major improvements have been done through the engine itself. And um, by the way, Opcache just gets a real boost, like what we call a serious upgrade. So it's really, really efficient like never before. And of course, most inner improvements on the core are very close to be done, but not done yet. So I just gave you a few quick examples. I'm going to run through this um, in more details, but if you just want to enable the new engine uh, just in time compilation, you have to activate it. It's part of the upcache um, uh, sub part of PHP, so you have to activate and specify that you want to use the just the just in time engine. So of course you have to use upcache, otherwise you don't have just in time access because it's part of the upcache. And then you have four digits for configuration. The first one uh, enables and disables the engine. Uh, the um, just-in-time compilation, otherwise you won't have it. You will be ahead of time, I'll explain it. Uh, the second one is how you register a location. Uh, so it's set to two by default, you'll see how it works. Uh, the third one is the way just-in-time engine triggers. So it goes from, I would say, most invasive to most least selective. And the last one is the optimization level you can give um, from zero to five, from known to deepest. This is really hard to explain if you are not into compilation. Uh, it's a really long way and this is not the purpose of this talk. So yeah, uh, for the last part of C, you know, for the first digit, you can actually have um, specific annotations, attributes uh, going to uh, your path functions, method classes, whatever you want it to be. So you can only selectly uh, choose when just-in-time compilation is uh, going to work for your code. So that's a pretty good um, sub-optimizations. So, and then you have to enable it. And of course, in between, uh, or, um, uh, inside the memory that you load to upcache to use, uh, you have to choose what part of memory you have to um, to use. And of, of course, the opcache get status uh, function, uh, if you just var dump what it's going to contain. We'll have new info and you will see new lines in the array dumped uh, stating that uh, just in time status uh, is live and something has been done and the number of things it's trying to uh, optimize in the code while it's been executed at this point. All right, so what are the results? Well, the results are pretty good actually. Um, those are numbers from tests run by Alex Meyers from Zend on several versions. Um, just so that you know, maybe you don't know about PHP on the left part is uh, part of the PHP source code. Yes, it's uh, the various PHP into the C uh, Zend engine source code. And it serves as a compass to test performance. It's a um, small script that the PHP team wrote to make sure that they don't do regressions. Um, and of course, WordPress is the most used PHP-based software. So if you look at the major optimizations that were done through the real version was PHP 5.1, PHP 7.0, and then you start looking at uh, the, the latest version of the engine, you don't get much of improvement from PHP 7.4, but you do get some actually, even though you have to remember that most of the work was done between 7.0 and 7.4. So guess what? We could have the same improvements between 7.0 and 7.4 than between 8.0 and 8.4 or something like that. So yeah, it's going to be um, pretty good. Uh, 
I do still have great hopes to see this improved over time. So yeah. Uh, so what's in the box? Well, uh, we have theoretical test suits because this uh, is Zen Micro Benchmarks or PHP Bench or stuff like that. Um, those are theoretical sources, you know. <clears throat> and we have the comp of PHP 8.0 Alpha 1, the very first release. Please remember, it's just the first release of Alpha. It's already pretty solid but only on synth synthetic tests that involve heavy calculations. Um, first of all, I'd like to see, and I would like you to take a look at the great improvements done between major first and minor versions too. If you look at the what Alex um, did on the average of his first tries a few days ago, uh, this is on theoretical tests, don't, don't forget about it, this is not your typical web application. Uh, let's look at the micro optimization between minor versions. This is just crazy. Look at PHP 7.0.33, uh, and we don't have PHP 7.0.0. Could be even worse if we had the initial version. But let. And uh, remember, those are millions of carbon dioxide emissions reduction worldwide saved while hosting. And please note that the ahead of time or just in time compiler will make difference in very specific cases. And last but not the least, I want you to take your time to just look at this graph. And remember, this is only PHP 8.0 Alpha 1. We are six months or less, five months away from the final release. This is just crazy how fast it goes. Talk about the elephant in the elephant in the room, the just-in-time compiler. The just-in-time compiler has been a question and a worry about for PHP like uh, since 2012, actually. Um, so uh, it, it has always been rejected until PHP 8. There were three reasons why uh, it was rejected, so that you have to understand this. First, there was no significant improvement for web apps. Like I told you, PHP is about web apps mostly. So what if we told that the efforts of the team were to be put on something that does not give end users additional value, you know? Uh, the second one was the higher complexity to maintain. Like I told you, the PHP ecosystem of people is not that large, that huge, and it's really um, time consuming to to do this, and by the way, shouts out to the core team because these people are truly amazing. Um, and third, uh, many of the ways to improve PHP performance were spotted all the time. Like, you sure you want to talk about just in time, just to be a buzzword around the internet when you know that PHP 7 is 100% faster than PHP 5? I mean, the earlier version is already 100% faster than the later version of PHP 5. So, yeah. That was a pretty good improvement. And when you see that, you say, I don't care about just-in-time and general stuff, you know? So JIT just needs understanding. Um, what is it? Um, it's a language marketing buzzword, but it's also something that is uh, truly deeply rooted into compiling. Uh, it mostly helps strong calculations and repetitive parts that are heavy on memory and CPU usage. So. It basically helps all math calculations, but not only. Okay, so like I just said on the previous slide, you activate it and you said what's the buffer size you want to do it uh, is going to be. So um, there were many implementations done in the past as a test drive, especially by Dimitris Togov. Uh, if you check it out of GitHub, he did some examples like one year ago uh, over, uh, with Sirius. Um, PHP 7 base plus just in time compilation. So now there are many things cleared thanks to PHP 7 that had to be done and also deployed so we can use them. It is time to try this. C sharp, Lua, JavaScript, Java, use them, for example, use just in time compilation. So don't think of um, just in time compilation in PHP as the holy grail, it is not. Think of it as a portal that is open to a new world of stuff that was not really um, made for PHP before. So, so far, the typical improvements on PHP web applications is quite minimal. Like if you use WordPress on latest versions and it doesn't really crash, you'll have barely plus 3% <clears throat> improves on the average. But on theoretical benchmark, you get a serious boost between 0 and 500%. So you can go pretty far, actually. Mm. 
also, <clears throat> um, people have to be careful because um, this can be the source of new bugs in apps because of the Zen engine, so it needs care. It needs a lot of care, not from you, but from the team. Very few people are able to understand and optimize the Zen engine and the PHP interpreter intrications right now. The ecosystem is really fragile. Um, if you want to know more about this, I suggest that you listen to Derek Retten's uh, awesome podcast named PHP Internal News. Uh, there was an episode with Sarah Goldman interview on Just In Time. It's really good. In 10 minutes, you learn pretty much everything you need to know about. And Sarah calls it uh, PHP 8, a public beta experiment to actually see if it's worth it or not. And she hopes for more improvement in the future, so do we. So remember, PHP can optimize your execution, but it will not do it, okay? It will maybe do it. What is just-in-time compilation? Well, I won't go through all the details, but think of something like um, GCC for compilation, for example, if you look at how it works. Uh, first, the PHP language that you write has to be lexed and parsed, which means we need to extract symbols, we need to extract spaces, um, comments, and everything that is structural into it and split them apart. And then the PHP source code get compiled into what we call OP codes. Think of it uh, if you use Java, for example, as bytecode. Those are internal instructions that are more basic, like, like the one you can see on the left. And then the opcodes are executed on a virtual machine that is written in C language. And then this virtual machine transforms C code from its native compilation and its native language to machine code and executes it, right? That's how PHP writes, uh, works. By the way, if you're working with OP cache, it's clearly here on OP codes on the left part, then you can have OP cache do something before going further. Sometimes when it detects, OP cache detects that it already knows about your source code, you go straight to the virtual machine, all right? And when you do, just in time compilation, you say, wait, 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 wait. I'm just gonna have to look at your code. And the just in time compiler do um, usually allow direct PHP code to be compiled into machine code straight to the CPU. So just in time is basically a gradual way to figure out what your program is trying to do uh, step by step and turning PHP code directly into CPU instructions more or less. All right. This could be weird if you're not familiar with this. So theoretically, uh, removing the in-between man should be positive, but that's much more complex in reality. So if you're asking, yeah, but in the far end, what could this bring? I will say that on the average of performance when really optimized, you can expect the just-in-time compiler of PHP to give you a boost of 10 to 20% performance improvements on the average, right? Not, mm, not more than this, but like Sarah Goldman say, uh, if we just reach 20, 10 to 20%, it's certainly a miracle. It's just, it's just good. Let's face it, anything that just works 10 to 12% faster on the same CPU is just it's just crazy good, right? It's just what we need, actually. So um, those are numbers to still by uh, Alex Myers on several versions. And this time, um, he runs the Mandelbro test uh, by Dimitri Stogov. Uh, you know, Mandelbro, the mathematicians that just um, explain how to generate fractal images, but which is a graphical representation of something that goes infinitely, recursively, uh, deep and chaotic, which is really fun to watch. You know what I'm talking about. So. If you look at this, it's basically how to write this the same uh, algorithms, which is really, really going to be the same because they are just essentially mathematics operations. So no need to go deeply into the differences in between all those languages. But if you look at what it does, look at how increasingly crazy PHP is going to be. If you go from PHP 7.0 to PHP 7.4, right in the middle, um, you see what it goes. And look at PHP 8, how fucking blazing fast it is. PHP is one of the fastest engines on this kind of test. And also remember, it's not straight code. It has an interpreter. So it's very close to the theoretical limit of GCC compiler, which is supposedly unbeatable. You know, you cannot beat GCC because it's been there for years and years and it's so optimized and for language of C that is just so low level, you cannot go further than this. I mean, PHP is based on C. So if you optimize C first, then you, you cannot optimize PHP more than C actually. You can do something, but it's going to be really, really unbeatable. So 
but the results are actually pretty insane when you look at them so yeah but it's not what you're here to hear about you want to know about some uh, new stuff you want to hear about what PHP 8 brings you so let's go into this by the way if you got the quotes and the jokes I made on every slide you are good first I would like to talk about something that is going to be a major source of code writing for everyone the attributes uh, in life in general there are two types of people the visionary people who tell you you should never put comments because your code should be self-explanatory clean coding and the visionary people who tell you you should always comment because any comment is a good comment as long as it's not a dumb comment and you know what we're gonna let those people fight on the side and argue very loudly but in the meantime we're going to focus on what PHP uh, is about when you comment um, so basically this feature is really new and so far PHP didn't have code internal documentation structures you could only do comments cut comments with uh, a sharp forward slashes and slash star star slash um, and that was the only thing that was possible in PHP so um, long time ago uh, back in the times PHP documenter was an adaptation of javadoc for um, PHP it never was official but became a, a standard de facto and was accepted um, in a form of coding so um, it's used right now by many people and reflection class now loves parsing PHP so yeah uh, attributes exist in C sharp in C++ in Rust in hack and you got decorators in Python and JavaScript so you can have um, a pretty good and accurate description of what it does if you are used to any of those languages so now PHP will have um, official which means maintained and uh, reference possible which means you can use it uh, yourself uh, reversible so you can read it as a human and guess what it does and reflection compatible structural metadata which means the reflection class of PHP 5 will be able to read those and never get wrong um, also which means now all uh, the the structural documentation will have to be character perfect documentation it will not be uh, hard to pass with variants and stuff like that so this is going to be really good for everyone so the user learned implementations like parsing the notations are still completely okay they will not stop working and this is completely mutually um, independent not exclusive but independent uh, please note this is the seventh RFC on this ID and the first three wants to be accepted first one is the initial one then the double A at, at syntax and the multi-line thing uh, that you can see on the slide. I'm going to talk about this slide before going further. Uh, as intended, you can expect it for classes, properties, functions, methods, parameters, and constants. So that now you don't have to pass dog blocks and it validates against language definition and custom extensions that you can write yourself. So uh, two syntaxes are accepted as valid the inferior, inferior, what you want to do, superior, superior, sign to, and uh, the double. A at the double at symbol uh, the um, the um, the double at before the uh, annotations, so um, it's evaluated as an abstract syntax tree, which means uh, since it is an AST, you can use expressions into it. And I gave you an example of a doctrine ORM entity. Uh, it's not fully implemented right now, so you cannot really test it uh, by the time I'm speaking, but you can try. Um, so I just mixed comments, I just mixed um, annotations of some kind here. Uh, I try to use three of them. So if you look at the first ones, uh, I have a cursor actually, I'm going to use pointer. So if you look at this, you got the ORM entity here, which is the at ORM entity from the imports. So um, this is uh, this is namespace inherited and read from the imports the use statement so I miss actually a line here lots of lines that would say import something something use something something in PHP so it would know what ORM means here it would be an, a, a, sub, a sub namespace of doctrine for example and so that ORM entity because this because you don't have to put this double slash star star here anymore but you can still put comments all around it like I did here and all after before between etc 
So this is just another example attributes that you can define in Doc22. This is the other alternative syntax with double a um, uh, the double uh, at here, and then you've got the multi line that was accepted recently. So you can just prevent yourself from you know putting this too many times. Uh, I just did some crap here because I think I put some forward forward superior signs too, but I forgot to remove. So bad idea. <laughs> this is not valid code in PHP eight, and uh, this one is. And you have um, like for example the ORM column of doc twenty. If you're familiar with this, so how to define that you want to use an integer integer with um, this length, I, I don't even know if you, you can do 255, it's just stupid. And true, and whatever you want it to give, you know, as a column. So you can see how it spreads and how it becomes, you know. And of course, you can use short syntax with this uh, example attributes, another class. And expressions are okay, so you can use it here with uh, with um, the double keyword class we're going to talk about. It's new and constants from the language or anything. So this is okay, all right? And um, for example, Doctrine will benefit from this a lot. So will Symfony annotations do, for example, or any generic class inclusion projects? Uh, I did personally a few of this recently where I used reflection class to post um, pluggable uh, classes that should be included in the future. And I, I loved it because it was insanely good, insanely interesting. I used Symfony caches to do this and it really worked well. And uh, Doctrine Annotations is a very, very, very popular and forked downloaded repository. Also, uh, for example, deprecations and just in time at function level, uh, the last digit in the previous slide, can be used this way. So I talked about, you know, how you could just activate just in time compiler only from some specific code zones where you should just use the, for example, uh, at at uh, JIT. And if you put this tag and you activate just in time with value four or the first digit, so you can actually use it only when you want it to be, you can define which part of your code using the new attributes uh, will be uh, executed on just in time compiler and the rest will be ahead of time for example all the new deprecations for example if you use the tag add deprecated it would just be the add, add deprecated right now okay so uh, you will need to import this and attributes are actually classes yes everything that you see here the ORM entity the another extra uh, imaginable asset range is everything here is going to be named from a class and the class is going to define the namespace and the stuff you want to use. So um, you will need to define your own class if you want to have custom attributes, uh, syntaxes and definition. So for the information, the first one is the class name and then everything here are constructor arguments. So everything you see and you add here will be passed uh, to the constructors of your classes. Also, they are not named, as you can see. You cannot name those variable, like I want this to be, I mean, this is an array, this is not a variable definition, you know? This is not name, not name, not name, not name. This is just key value, key value. And uh, they are not nestable, which means you cannot do like attributes uses uh, in parentheses, another attributes in parentheses, another attributes, this is not possible. So this is limitation, but that might be removed later on. Uh, Sebastian Bergman tweeted that this should be put in uh, PHP unit 11, which is expected uh, to be the next main, re main release in 2021, I think, to this date. So yeah, um, pretty new way to document stuff, and we'll see when the comments are going to be necessary now, but expect some migrations of your code due to that. You will not... Um, <laughs> I think the largest example I have in mind right now is uh, Doctrine Annotations or Symphony Annotations. You will not need to rewrite all your codes um, of controllers or entities for this reason, all right? So, second thing that I really want to talk about. This is absolutely insanely cool uh, and a very good way of userland um, needs converted into something included, you know? So, um, basically, when you bid an object, especially when you think of data transfer objects or value objects, which means object that is created to just pass value from one object to another, or contains some value, some contains some data actually, and not only behavior, um, which means they carry inner properties. You want to design um, on the constructor uh, a few properties that you want to initialize into a constructor, which is usually 
I would say, I don't have any ID, but I'll say 90% of constructors worldwide are made to initialize um, the default attributes, uh, attributes with the default value. So with the magic function underscore underscore construct, a constructor, uh, everything that is um, initialized with visibility will just be considered as a constructor promotion, which means if you do like this, a public float, a float, it says, all right, you want me to define a new public float named a float into this. And you see into my sample class here, I did not add the attributes. So this means the attribute definition can be contained into the constructor signature, which is really new. And by the way, I used the new um, attributes v2 upstairs, uh, just above if you if you want to see on custom attribute here, I just use it. And I also use the, um, the um, old comments uh, from PHP doc so that you see you can mix them. Um, it's slightly trickier to read but you will just adapt rapidly I think, uh, especially since inheritance is now allowed uh, with uh, mixed overrides or, or not. So this only works in the constructor, right? It doesn't work anywhere else in classes or traits. Uh, you can mix parameters that will be promoted and parameters that won't. Here, I put a float and another float. This is going to be promoted. This is just local scope, all right? Not global scope from the project, from the class. Um, so reflections will mark those attributes, reflection class as promoted. If you var dump a reflection class on the signature, uh, you, you will see that it's marked as promoted and this one is marked not promoted, not marked as promoted actually. So um, you can avoid specifying the type. Uh, I did not do this here, but you can just say uh, float a float and you say, okay, so you don't, you don't um, public, public a float, sorry. And you can um, remove the float in the middle and say, I don't want to tell you which uh, strong typing is going to be, okay? And you can, um, you can mix so both of them and you cannot uh, override an existing property for if you have like for here my sample class or class b extends class a and if your class b constructor uses um, a property that is called c for example you cannot have a private property or any property in a or b already defined that is overridden by a constructor with the same name this throws an error okay a fatal error so um, you cannot use variadic arguments, as you can guess, of course, because having uh, an infinite number of arguments would not be cool, uh, because you would not know how many of them you should assign and how you refer to them. Um, you can avoid specifying the type, like I just say, and you can also have default basic values. So this one is not abstract syntax tree, so you won't have rich parsing on this, but static values can be used. So public int an int equals zero is a constructor promotion for an integer uh, public property named an int with zero value by default. Um, so yeah, you can not put sums or new x something new class here, it doesn't work. So you'll still have to write the getters and setter, but this is quite of an improvement and harder to read because you don't have the necessary ID to find this, but yeah, any non-variadic variable is um, considered as a constructor argument and boom, like I say, like I wrote, you've got the magic. Moving on. Uh, this is insane. <laughs> the next two slides are dedicated to the strings changes and the comparison changes. This is very easy to explain and the intrications are massive. This is a huge change in the way PHP works. Let me summarize. Now to this day, the main reason the triple equal is preferred is A, for its performance, and B, because some results are hard to explain if you don't. So if you don't typecast when you use comparisons, it's pretty faster because you say, anywhere I'm gonna look at the memory imprint in the Zen engine, and if it's not the same type on both sides, then return that false, it's not equal, there's no way, it's not triple equal. But if you do double equal, which is the normal way of use of PHP, you also have some very weird results. Most unexplained results with double equal actually come from string comparisons, especially with numbers. Like, you could understand why 
if I tell you zero double equal zero dot zero, you're gonna say yeah, yeah, this is which does not require a triple equal, right? If you put a triple equal and you write this down, it's going to be false 100% of the time. If you write double equal, it's going to be true 100% of the time. But yeah, most unexplained results come from double equal. And this massive pull request fixes all of this. Let me summarize it for you. If you look at this example, var jump zero, double equal, my test strings in between quotes, in double quotes, this returns true <laughs> there's no fucking way but, but you can explain this to someone who starts using php actually this is just insanity and actually if you know how the language works you can totally explain this in the way it is defined as is and it's perfectly normal for the people who use php people who build the language mm. the thing is it's not how things are expected to work. It never was and never will be. So um, this massive pull request just going to fix many things. It's going to fix uh, first the double equal comparison with strings and numbered strings and numeric strings, which we're going to talk about next slides. And it's going to therefore fix lots of things like reading the keys in an array. If you look at my second example here, if you just put all these four string values, remember, these are not keys, right? These are values. Uh, they are going to be automatically um, labeled uh, as uh, zero, uh, at double arrow A, one double arrow B, two double arrow C, and three double arrow D, right? So we're going to have keys, natural keys. PSP is going to push them with automatic keying. And we say, let's check if there's a value, and I mean value, not the key, right? This has nothing to do with the keys. Value zero. If you use the infamous in array functions, is there? Is this is this is key uh, needle haystack? Okay, so needle is value zero contained in this array. PHP says yeah, bro, it is, and you're gonna no, it's not. How did you? I trusted you. <laughs> so. People don't know about it, but static analyzers do this. If you use in array, you have to use a third argument that is true or false. Default, false. Is it going to be a strict comparison? True. So guess what? If you do a strict comparison, eh, it works. You get a double false. And also, uh, this is going to fix the array sorting functions with default parameters that currently, right now, are set to permissive and subject to mistakes instead of being strict and subject to direct comprehension. So I just gave you the, the, the table that it comes from the, the, the RFC right now. If you look at this with double equal, you've got zero double equal to zero with strings is going to be true because this is interpreted as a numeric strings, which we're going to talk about in the next slide. Be patient, I know. Zero is equal to zero dot zero and zero is equal to foo. Why? Because foo is evaluated as something, and something that is wrong. So therefore it's wrong because it's just a string, so its value is false, and false is converted to zero, so zero, which is converted to false to, equals zero, which is true. You get it? I won't repeat it. And it's going to be false after. It's going to be the same for empty strings, for um, numeric strings with spaces, which is allowed, and not numeric strings, because starting with numeric, but yeah, no, it falls up back to the end. So this is what we are expected to change. With the second change made to strings is the concept of numeric strings. In terms of numeric strings, following the last side, this is a major huge BC breaks for PHP 8. And it's a massive source of bugs for weekly checking applications in the past, because right now it's going to work correctly. PHP uses a very non-intuitive way to consider strings as number. And this is appealing to most people who have been working bare to the metal with low level structures and languages like C, C++, C Sharp, whatever you want it to be, um, even Java, for example. Everything is going to be completely mind blowing for people who are used to say, if you don't define the memory imprint as a string, it's not going to be treated anywhere other than being a string. And PHP goes further and says, right, bro, but I'm sorry, if you put if you put the number three in between quotes, what is it representing? It's a string, right? Everyone's going to agree with that. But 
Isn't it a string that is also a number? And you cannot say no to that. Even if you are not a programmer, if I put you, uh, if I just give you a, a digit, a number, which in um, quotes, you can say it's just a number in quotes. You know, if I just say this is a bold statement with air quotes, I'm going to write it down, bold statement with quotes. You're going to say it's just the word bold statement in between quotes. And what is a three between quotes? Is the number three between quotes. It's also a digit. What is 33? It's the number 33. So it's not natural. And I don't think uh, that being restrictive on the hardcore languages like uh, assembly, C, whatever you wanted to do, is just better than actually not considering strings into it. So PHP uh, has three ways to consider what it calls numeric strings. First one is anything that is a number. I'm going to say anything because you can write numbers down in PHP in several ways. It's not only about writing digits. Uh, you can write in binary, hexadecimal, decimal, which is the default, and you can also express um, um, exponentiality with like 3e10, for example, which is uh, 3, 3 power 10, you know. You, you can write exponential numbers this way. So there are several ways to write down things like ox something, oh something, ob something, um, um, zero O something to just tell that you're going to write in octal or in hexadecimal in binary stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to have you focus on um, base 10. Okay, so in decimal, if you have only a number in decimal with preceding white space, PHP says this has no reason not to be considered as a a version of um, the, the number contained inside with just spaces, which means in my case here, this is a string named 3. If you dump the type, it's going to be string. But is it equal to 3? Yes, it is. Also, PHP says you have leading numeric followed by non-numeric things. This is the major source of problem. Like example in my in my string here, 333 three, three alpha, PHP is going to parse it. If you want to evaluate it as a number, it's going to say, okay, wait, if I'm not due to subdue to strict evaluations, I'm going to make a typecast and coercion, and I'm going to coerce this into an int or a float. How do I do this? Let's start from the left. Three, okay, three, okay, three, alpha, A, 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 A. A is not a number, so we stop. And PHP says this strings equals 333, 333, okay? And PHP says everything that is not in the, falls, doesn't fall under these cases is non-numeric, okay? So the rest is non-numeric. So this PR uh, is about changing one thing only, considering only the first one to be numeric values. The rest will be promoted to the new type error that is going to be spread. It's not new, but it's promoted to pretty much all the functions in PHP right now, like many PHP 8 changes. So old apps will mostly break uh, if um, using this on non passed optimized or sanitized string or basic conversions. So both these slides and the previous one are historic changes. That's the kind of deep discussions that were on internals mailing list. And this partially solved the divergence between retro compatibility and new way of thinking of futures. So many ways were explored, like the proposal of Zev to have uh, two different languages, subset or superset. I wrote an article on Medium regarding this. And um, also, there is a validated RFC to handle floating points and internalizations in numeric string fixes. Okay, so uh, this changing many things. This changing the implicit conversion, like when you declare an array, like I did here. Uh, this changing explicit conversions uh, when you do um, a typecasting force like that. The is numeric test. This changing string offsets in arrays like this. If you want to do this, you cannot have uh, an array that is not uh, an integer or a string. So this is going to be considered differently. Um, uh, this changing arithmetic operations, like what does 99 plus string do? Good luck finding out. This changing increment and decrement operators, like what does plus plus three, <laughs> plus plus dollar a when dollar a has been assigned to three. Uh, the string to string comparisons, like is this string equal to this one? And the bitwise operators, because sometimes some on very rare cases you have to use them. All right, new thing. I'm going to start going faster, actually. New thing. That is, to me, the most 
amazing static analysis results called in typical um, RDBMA apps I have. This is going to be clearly insane, the no safe operators. So you see in typical CRUDs application, create, read, update, delete, search, uh, with extensive object traversal, you have like RDBMS or DBMS or the use of um, object relational mappers, the ORMs like hello eloquent, hello doctrine, hello propel. Uh, there are many checks to be done when chaining calls through getters, mostly due to the needs that you want to reflect the database structuration. Let me get the um, person so that I get the employee table, so that I get the status table, so that I match them to get the number of hours, so that I get the uh, employee um, rate, so that I can calculate the income, something and therefore get a formula to get the, um, men, the, the monthly income or stuff like that, okay? So, generally you write this, you write if uh, dollar A, play, um, arrow, get B, arrow, get C, arrow, get D, something. Uh, <clears throat> and people do um, chain checks <clears throat> for non-null. <clears throat> so, um, I want a voice. Uh, this adds uh, this null safe as an operator and um, if you look at how it works it's actually a pretty straightforward concatenation of the question mark already used for null nullable types nullable return types and the arrow that is the natural way of fetching objects as an operator so what you do you just concatenate all this and guess what it does exactly what you think it does so um, if you do this at any time the left-handed part is evaluated to null, it just stops and returns null without raising any error. I know some of these could not return null or an object that is of a good type, but it really saves you like a lot. Sometimes you just trust your structures and with strong typing you can because you can only return an object of the good class for example so if you do good return types and in conjunction with that there is actually zero way you can be wrong on your getters and your chain gets so um you only need if my example right now one final check to see that the get d for example is going to be what you want it to be i just put triple equals one whatever you want it to be but sometimes if you assign it to a variable you have to test that the last one but can return also null so it will not uh, do anything special just like here in this example get this gonna return null or something right even dollar a on the left side is going to work because the null safe operator evaluates left to being not null so if dollar a is null you will have this work perfectly and stop at the first uh, instruction right so it's fully safe this is the number one result I have so far in current static analysis tools like PHP stand by the thousands. The order of magnitude of this mistake of the code required to fix this is absolutely amazing. It's, it's like uh, you have to write hundreds of lines of codes just to save a few tenths of mistakes, you see. Last time I checked uh, an app that was eight years old with PHP stand and Solm, they were both reporting over 60% of the source code only on this kind of defaults, on typical um, uh, system management of entities uh, applications. This is your number one source of problems. So this is going to be really insane. Um, weak maps, uh, this is a collection of data objects which are in keys are uh, weakly referenced instead of being strongly referenced which means, which means that they are not prevented from being garbage collected so php8 introduces a weak map class to create objects to be used as a uh, weak map keys that can be destroyed and removed in the weak map if there are not any further reference to the key objects so in the long time processes we could prevent memory leaks and improve performance this is useful for caches for example it's not your everyday daily application that uses this but you can so php 7.4 added the weak reference to one entry and php 8 uh, simply adds a collection of those so yeah you can see the example here you just set a variable set anything you want an object you put it into weak map and then you just unset whatever you had to do and then the weak map still exists but there is an entry the entry was memorized except it's just completely empty now all right so um, union types now talking about the types we're gonna have a few slides about the types 
So um, the union type RFC will allow everything that is a type definition to explicitly tell what possibilities are accepted instead other older solutions like uh, nothing, for example, that was just a good way to, not, to get the codes to be specific. Uh, mixed, that was not really good, but it was only in PHP doc, as you could see on the next slide, and uh, etc. Mm. So since PHP 7.1, you have the possibility to use a nullable type with exclamation mark in your type, you can also use iterable, which is the equivalent of an array or something that implements traversable. So make sure you can for each this and go over it and iterate on it. Um, and also you can do that now, which means you can do any type with uh, a pipe, any other type and a pipe and any other type, etc. All right. So you could use object classes. So this is potentially infinite. Um, so for example, and if you lose, uh, look at the, the, um, the PHP API, API there's going to be an update, like I took substring replace as an example, it can return an array of a string. So this will have a return type that is going to be strongly typed to array of string. Um, if you think of multiplications, for example, I just went to implement a very basic multiply. Let's say that you just want to work on ints and floats. So you say, I, I'm accepting both, uh, why not? Um, you will have the conversion done and every check done inside, but from, from the time being, you can just accept ints and floats on the both sides, operand 1, operand 2, a, b, and uh, this allows you to simply do this. This is pretty straightforward if you've been using PHPDoc, because this is just already how PHPDoc works. So um, all the types are taken in order preference, and also there's a new syntax for null, uh, which is a pipe null, which is uh, something you would use to do if, you have <coughs> if you've been doing uh, this for the PHPDoc. And to show you what it does, actually, um, I put this basic um, test. So if you check all the types here, um, you'll see that I just declared, this is the same code, all right? Up and above and below. This is the same code except the strict types, right? So if you use um, no strict type, uh, the union type is going to say, all right, I want to int a float or a bool and uh, I pass it strings. So strings are, remember, numeric strings are converted. If you look at below, strings are not converted because I said strict types. And then if you use um, true, which is the third possibility, bool, it says, okay, this is boolean, all right, I'll let it go through. This will be evaluated as a float, and this is going to be type error, and then everything else is going to be type error. So this is a major change uh, in how you can accept variables into your functions. And this is really cool. But it's not the only thing that is going to change because you can also use mixed as a type, just like you could do in PHPDoc. So PHP 5 has typed parameter basics like class, the name of your class, um, dollar your variable, right? This is PHP 5. PHP 7 had added uh, typed parameters improvement, like in, float, or basic things like that. Uh, PHP 7.4 had typed properties, which means you can do the same on properties in classes and traits. And uh, now, as you can see in this history, uh, object has been added in PHP 7.2, nullable in PHP 1. Now you can add mixed. And mixed is not uh, through this cache in the in tra trash in the can, you know, it's just um, probably scan in the trash, sorry, I'm gonna have to do this again. Uh, you cannot, you cannot uh, tell uh, um, the difference between, I don't know, I didn't add typing, and this was intended to accept or return anything. Or you can say for very rare cases, this type cannot be type hinted in PHP. So this is the difference between doing nothing and explicitly doing something that you wanted to do because you say, this function, this callable, this method, whatever, is meant to accept many types, and I don't want to specify all of them. Also, remember, mixed cannot be uh, nullable because um, mixed is already including null because null here uh, is already part of all of this. And uh, don't extend mixed into mixed or void because void broadens the space if you have inheritance. So you have to be um, careful about this. Right. 
And talking about rates and types, and uh, remember we are going slow now, we're going because all the uh, next subsequent things are going to be easier to understand. Mm. We do have a self uh, double, co double colon, uh, which is going to change the name by the way, because it's in Hebrew right now, it's going to be in English soon. Um, the double colon uh, name is going to change. You had self colon colon. Now you can have static colon colon. So um, this uh, returns the caller instead of the original parent call potentially. If there is one. Uh, if you do remember, this is called late static binding. Um, basically, class, class B extends class A. A method declared in A returns static and it's not overridden in B. So if you call this method, it's going to say A is A and B is of B. Okay, if your method just dumps, for example, the, the class um, name. And if you do things with self, you would have A in both cases because self checks where it was declared at declaration time and not at static um, at the late, late static binding moment. You know, it's not bound in the late uh, interpretation of the code. So this is a new difference. So you can have static as a written type and as um, a written type here and in a return expression, right? So you have static in both of these. Uh, one new thing too, very interesting, uh, proposed by Nicholas Grecus, um, is a new uh, native interface of type hand, which is a string or something that implements uh, the magic function of going to call to string. So this is just to sum up, very pretty straightforward thing, but just save some time trying to say, does what I want to pass allow uh, being treated as a string in some way? So yes, you have to do this and stringable is accepted. So if you want to think of an analogy, think of, uh, it's not the same I know, but think of um, callable or iterable. It's just pretty much working the same way. You know, there are um, emblems, there are letters or something that is just under the hood, you know. Um, you just have to check that no class uh, has the same name in your code. If you have a class that is called stringable, it's time to change it. Uh, all right, pretty straightforward with that too. Uh, this one is a new control structure that is new and that is really, really uh, interesting. As you know, we have switch. Uh, this is a switch that has taken steroids, you know. Uh, I couldn't test it because it was merged slightly after Alpha 2, which is uh, only available since, I don't know, yesterday or the day before yesterday as I mentioned this. So I didn't have the time to check if it's already implemented and merged, but uh, basically this is a, a strong check on a switch case. Uh, with no type coercion, so what you see is what you get exactly. Uh, no break statements and combined conditions. So, for example, I just forced the strict types equal zero just to prove you it doesn't um, affect this how it works, you know. And this is uh, an um, an expression you can use it on the fly. This is not only your control structure; it's a control function, you know. At some point, so you match something and you say you can evaluate this to um, an integer, a string, a float, or any other string that would be considered a number, right? So if you do, um, does this function match or not the same, you see, one, zero, 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 one, you see that it perfectly works um, as intended, you know? So this is really cool. Also, you can have multiple statement groups here, one, two, three, you can put as many as you can, okay? So that's that's pretty interesting. It's just like uh, a new way of writing switches, and there's a whole article on the internet that I encourage you to read within when you should choose one or another. It's a long story. Um, a few things that are changed to uh, private methods inheritance, that is, uh, Subtle. We're going to go into more subtle things right now, but I want to make a spotlight on this. You know, PHP used to um, apply the same inheritance checks on public, protected, and private methods. So that means that if you have a private method and you override this class with another uh, redefinition of the private method, the subsequent inheriting uh, object. Uh, just gets to check if the signature, for example, is the same as the parent one. And this has no sense because everything that's private by definition is not accessible by children. So um, inheritance check won't be performed again, but you have a, a, a warning now, you have a, 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 a message I just put here. Let's say that you cannot override things because yes, you could override theoretically in class B extended class A 
a new method that wouldn't be private, it could be private, you don't care, that has the same name as A but would not be the method defined in A, which is going to be very complicated if you want to read this. So also, uh, by the way, final private function, just uh, a, a definition that doesn't pass anymore in the compiler because uh, in, in the Lexer, because this is nonsense, right? Um, if you ever tried this today, don't. <laughs> uh, and please don't do this if you can, but at least now you know it will not work anymore. Uh, little addition to the um, to the uh, to the language actually. Uh, most people misuse one of the thousands of string native functions of PHP to just check uh, most of the time if a string is contained or starts or ends. Um, with uh, another another string. So this is not uh, what those functions are intended to make. Uh, I'm thinking about str pose, str, str, uh, substring or mb substring, whatever. Um, this, this is not intended to be the same, you know, this is done to extract portions, to get the index, to get the many occurrences you have, etc. So if you want to just check if a string starts, ends with a string or contains another string. There is no native function with PHP and those ones are solving it and they are radical. They are blazing, blazing lightning fast and they return a boolean only, which means does it contain yes or not? Does it start with yes or not? True, false. It cannot be any other value void, zero, one, two. It's boolean, right? So this is pretty cool. Um, the argument order is cool. Does this contain this? So does haystack contain needle? So does str starts with? So if you replace, I think, I think, if, I feel if you replace the underscores with this, yeah, does str haystack starts uh, with needle? You see, like that, you just um, almost get to the point of the order. So it's pretty native and really well formulated. Okay. Um, so they replace those basic needs, they just return all false ones, and you still have value added for the old ones, like um, str pose, for example, uh, just gives you the position. If you want to know which index it starts, not only do you want to know if it is contained, that is a good story to, to, to use, you know? So I would just still go this way in this case. Uh, new thing to throw is not an expression, it's not a statement, because uh, in before you should only do um, for example, a colon, then throw new something, colon, and that's the only way you could use um, to throw exceptions. Now you can do this at any point where you want to use it, including an exception thrown uh, as an expression. So you can be more than a statement. Uh, it works pretty much everywhere, including in shortcuts like uh, ternary operators and uh, arrow functions and stuff like that. So that's pretty new. Uh, and a few minor changes now to finish. Uh, I selected most of them, like 90% of them, 95% of them, not everything is here, but the changelog is moving, so yeah. First thing, you can add trailing commas after parameters and closure use. Uh, this is, um, since PHP 4, you can, I think it's 4, uh, you can add uh, a trailing comma to the array definitions. PHP 5, 4 just included the short syntax on arrays, and um, on calls, like PHP 7, 3 allowed you to put a viable trailing comma, because most of the time it's going to be for var dump. I know everyone, not everyone using xdebug, xdebug and stuff like that, but um, sometimes you just want to do a quick, ah, you, your brain is dead, like what, what is happening? Just var dump, um, F5 refresh, whatever, and you just want to check. And most of the time you want to just eh, copy paste all the variables you wanted to add. And this trading comma was a nightmare because you just had to uh, have a, a more intense cognitive load so that you go back to your code, remove the comma, back to your browser F5 again, or back to your uh, command line and press enter again. Th this was just a nightmare. So starting with PHP 8, you can also do this in signatures. So you can do this pretty much everywhere, I think now, <laughs> because you can do this in, uh, oh my God, don't do this, attributes definition in multiple viable definitions. You can you can use commas pretty much everywhere you want to enumerate the same thing. So, um, and also it's possible to be uh, done in uh, use lists now. So you can do this in use in classes and uh, traits. Uh, please don't, don't do this. <laughs> I know we are, I'm a huge fan of arrays with trading commas when they are on multi-lined. Uh, I would say the same thing with functions multi-lined, but if you want one line like this, ah, 
gosh, is it maybe maybe it's because we all old because this is not um, released yet. So we are going to be all of us are going to be too old for this. I don't think it's going to be a good idea, but it's possible. Uh, the variable syntax update, that is uh, a nightmare too. I just quoted this RFC straight away because this is uh, too complex to uh, explain otherwise. It's about how you dereference. Uh, dereferencing, dereferencing means um, getting a reference in memory location through a particular syntax. Uh, PHP before 8, PHP 8, has slight inconsistencies. So, um, for example, the interpolated and non-interpolated strings were not treated the same, which means this food dollar bar with pink codes um, in between bracket zero uh, worked, but this with a method call did not. Also, this constant was liquid. You can just extract from an array of constants, but the magic constant was not. And if you do this, you also have the uh, the reference ability from class constants and you could do this with an object and attributes uh, reading and the length reading and that was not working now you will be able to do this i don't recommend it but you can do this and class constants also were not the referenceable so you could just not do this you could do this actually uh, by using only one class constants and going for a variable and a variable but you could not do a constant in between so now you have your class your constant your variable so um also uh, new and instance of native keywords now support expressions too uh, so you can explain more than just a plain reference. You can have this being a more complex analysis if you want to do new something, new instance of something. So that's not something you do every day, but you could have to need this uh, sooner or later. The concatenation was deprecated in 7.4 and now it's effective, which means um, in life there is arithmetics like plus, minus, um, star and slash, but basic arithmetic scale is not but also power and stuff like that i'm not going to name all the possibilities but most of the times mathematics just rule the um the operator's precedence and this is defined by how you read an expression to interpret it as a human in uh, a mathematical formula and you would be shocked to know that between countries not everyone has the same way of um, using this. For example, parentheses without operators are not considered the same way in some different parts of the countries. Uh, this is something you often see on social networks where people are like, I tricked you. And um, there is some case in PHP where concatenation, the operator point, which is not an arithmetic operator, but it is an operator, used to have no particular precedence, so it has the same precedence as the plus and the minus. So, if you were to just take the small part here, sum dot dollar a plus dollar b, if I just here, I just put it in the end, you would just have a working things in both language, both versions, uh, PHP 8 and anything before 8, and you will have sum um, concatenated to a, so sum dollar a, and then PHP would add dollar B because it would be le read from left to right in this order. And right now, the concatenation is going to be less precedence, having less precedence than the arithmetic operators. So which means right now, uh, as of PHP 8, if you see at the examples I give you, you had uh, of PHP 7.4 deprecation notice, warnings, and then it would just give zero for no reason, because this is no reason, no reason, and this had nothing to do to be explainable. This whole bunch of crap does of PHP as of PHP 8, sum 5, and then 4, because it's 3 plus 2 and 7 minus 3, right? So this is completely new uh, as it comes to concatenations. Uh, this is going to be a busy break in many old applications or non-careful people uh, code, actually. You could get weird errors with, so be careful with that. 
Um, some quick words, native JSON sports, because um, JSON has proven to be the most innovative way of representing multidimensional data uh, at extremely low metadata verbosity costs. So thanks to the rise of JavaScript, Ajax, and uh, for APIs, and thanks to the rise of NoSQL uh, document terrain engines, and because PHP is a web-oriented language, and it's a native language in all browsers, uh, JSON is really, really the standard by now. So um, now PHP does not require additional libraries, so you will not be able to disable it with dot slash configure disability some when you compile it. And, and the extension is standalone. So uh, no more need to uh, have JSON encode and JSON decode polyfills. You will not be required to do this or include this in Composer, um, for example. Um, this also allows PHP internal functions to use JSON actually because it's part of the language. Uh, no more need to use extension loaded JSON like this. So yeah, uh, the reason for that, if you want it, is the JSON parser in PHP 5 was not complying with the PHP license for very old historical reasons. So the new code was added to PHP 7. Welcome. Uh, this operator, uh, colon colon class, was um, resolved at compile time and not as late starting binding. So you could not use uh, this when you wanted to go. For example, static colon colon class was working, but dollar my instance, dollar my object, dollar, um, colon colon class was not working. And if you want to just dump the class of an object because you, your object is huge and you don't want to get everything inside, you had to use get class, get, um, get cold class or stuff like that. Uh, depending if you want the initial class or the cold class, which is complicated. So pretty much like you had get class, you got you got get, get cold class too. Uh, and the get cold class works with uh, static uh, colon colon class. So now you have this that works like get class. Okay, so you can just uh, get the uh, fully qualifying class name of uh, an object when you dump it. So it's pretty cool. Um, also, uh, something that PHP did not do uh, before. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Until PHP 8, when you just wanted to catch an exception, when you wanted to do, let's say, try multiple catches and finally blocks, uh, you had to bind the exception code to a variable uh, to use it or not. Uh, so now you can avoid having to bind a useless variable if you don't need to do anything with it. I don't really know if it was going to memory, if it was not used. Maybe it was just uh, declared on something, but no, the difference between those two is just that you have this dollar exception that goes away. You don't need to. You don't need to. If you don't use it, you don't need to. All right. Um, this is a sum and a correction of like thousands. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Tens and tens, not thousands, but uh, 20, 30. Um, updates, uh, but I'm not going to name them all. Namely, as I mentioned way above in the slides a few minutes ago, uh, there are consistent typing errors. So anything now that is going to be expecting things and will not be typed correctly in the core internal functions will throw a type error. Just like strlen that I just uh, put on the example here. If you want to give this an array, it's going to say, wait, 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 I'm expecting a string, bro. You're throwing me an array. You get a type error. This is a fatal error. And this used to be, you know, the good old um, expected parameter x to be z, you see, and this is just uh, a source of mistakes. So now, no more of this. Speaking about errors, uh, the default error, this is not a major change, but if you just do, uh, for example, containers and you build them correctly with just uh, using image uh, in Docker or something, if you do this pretty fast without uh, modifying the base values, um, the default error and PDO level reporting will now be everything. <laughs> everything for uh, the, the core errors and pretty much everything for PDO. Not everything, but um, PDO will go to um, PDO error mode exception by default, and PHP goes to the EOR, which is all errors warnings supported will be raised, including um, parse errors thanks to PHP 7. So PDO won't be silent now, and uh, PHP won't be either. So remember, this is just the default value, right? You can still override this in 
PHP ini if you need. Uh, you can override this as server or container level, like um, the the um, HT access file in Apache. If you use Apache servers or the um, the uh, params uh, add params, if you use an nginx or something like that, um, or locally in your code, if you do any set or uh, whatever you wanted to modify, okay, or error reporting e all for example, or e none or e error, or if you just set something in between, okay. Um, so yeah, this think about this. This will change a few things uh, in production and stuff. So you will have if you have errors in production, you have even more. And um, so now um, speaking about errors, um, this is a sum of about twenty new changes too. But it definitely changes how things are going to be checked in code. So I just selected the what is to me the top reasons to focus on this. Any really legacy code won't pass anymore. So it's time for you to go more defensive programming, definitely. If you don't do this already, you're about dead. Why? Let me give you examples. So first, signature mismatch, no throws, fatal error. So if you have um, an overriding of class B extend is class A, you redefine uh, anything that is in class A, you don't get a warning and a notice, you just get a fully complete fatal error right now. Uh, the arithmetic and bitwise operator, as we saw before, now throw a type error when the type is not appropriate. So if you just try to make uh, any object plus plus or a table plus a table, an array plus a ta an array, or if you want to use uh, a resource and um, multiply this resource by two, type error now, definitely. Um, also, undefined variables now throw errors. This is new and this is good. <laughs> we have to check. Uh, static analysis can do this pretty straightforwardly and pretty intuitively. Uh, undefined array and indexes and properties. On the other side, just when promoted to from uh, notice to warnings. Okay, so this is a warning. I think it's going to be an error at some point, but right now it's only a warning. This is a You've been warned, right? Um, illegal offsets in keys and calls, no throw errors too. And last but not the least, um, division by zero, not throws an error. This is a very old, this is older than me, you and the PHP, this is older as the universe, but dividing by zero is still uh, something that was uh, allowing you to continue like, hey bro, you're trying to divide by zero, what do you, what you do? Oh, all right, let's just divide by nothing and let's go on. So this was just negating the division. Uh, and invalid arguments supplied for forage now causes errors too. It's not going to be a mistake or something that is blocking the forage and blah, 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 going on to the next uh, execution lines. Nope, you will get an error now and many more. All right. Um, small interesting thing, the silencing a at operator removed. Uh, this used to be called silence fatal errors. Now you won't be doing pretty much anything. So, um, so yeah, this is a pretty good. So if you just do um, if open and the file is not accessible or something and you just used to have fat errors, then now you will have the errors and you have to handle them, handle them and uh, actually use uh, try catch blocks for most of the time. And yes, this part on the left is a portal reference. If you have it, I like you. Um, this is really fast now. Um, you, you could actually, this was uh, insane, but it, it was slightly easier to just create a datum from a datum immutable, which is uh, the, the, the exact same class, except you cannot modify the value of the date once it's created, than the other way around. Uh, and this fixes how you go to, from one to another, because now both we have a, a method that will be create from interface, from anything that extends a datum interface. And guess what both do? So yeah, now it's very consistent from one to the other. Um, this is how PHP um, helps you debug, and this is really, really interesting. You can now get a resource ID, because there are still some resources, uh, instead of typecasting it. So before that, you should be doing uh, int uh, between parentheses uh, dollar my resource, uh, and now you just have to do a resource, get resource ID of your resource. It's just way more interesting. Uh, get debug type is going to give you much more information. I put them all in summary from the RC here. So if you read, for example, you're going to have a fully qualified class name on objects and the resource ID uh, here, resource of some ID or resource closed if the resource is closed until the end of the script, uh, etc, etc. And also if you do throw uh, some exceptions. The get trace a string is going to be more verbose and configurable now. So 
um, debugging is going to be um, really easier with PHP 8. Uh, one quick word, the fdiv uh, might not be appearing to more, most of you who just use the slash and divide all the time like that. Um, this is similar to fmod, which just divides as you can expect, but in the, e, uh, the IAEE uh, 754 way, which is a 1985 standard of floating point division and how you should handle division in a very universal way and very normalized way, which means now this can return minus int as a string, I think, uh, int and not a number, it's just like JavaScript would do, for example. And it also handles rounding in a standard way if you just uh, go to the flows and to the limits, right? Um, a few more things and we already almost done. You can let your brains uh, rest. The abstract methods override, uh, which is pretty straightforward to use. Uh, if you, for some example, um, were to use abstract methods definitions in traits, yes, you can. PHP didn't check the signature on override. Let me give you this example. Abstract, you have a trait, right? Just trait. Uh, abstract public function, my method, and you have a strongly typed parameter and a strongly typed return type, okay? So you just use this class, this, is this trait, this is perfectly okay. And if you want to use it the old way, you could just use public function, my method, and parameters. And PHP would just say, all right, you're good, you're good. Just use my method. And this one is the new one. It just crushes the next one. And all your verifications here would be gone to void. So the new way of writing this is public function, my method, the same signature as you could find above, right? You, this int here is int int is the same way above. Okay, so that's much more coherent regarding the rest of how PHP handles uh, inheritance and uses. Uh, very quick word, uh, this was raised by Nikita Popov in the RFC. Um, this is how the functions work. Uh, usort is a user custom way of sorting arrays and asort is a key preserving way of sorting arrays by values. Both have little bugs. They work, don't be mistaken, they work, but they can be tricky because usort uh, causes written functions to be bogus if you uh, return something that is not strongly typed as a, as a check. So if you compare objects, you could have very differences. Um, for example, if you sort objects on one property and they don't have the other properties, so th this could be really tricky. And a sort uh, didn't preserve the keys correctly. This one is a little harder to understand. Uh, for, I'll give you an example here, which is the one straight taken from the um, Nikita uh, example. So you have uh, this uh, 1100. So you say a sort, a sort, remember, it's not k sort, it's a sort. So it's sorted by values. So you would expect this to be 0, 0, then 1, 1. So a 0, b 0, c 1, d 1. So you would expect peg this, the table sorting, to be exactly this. But in PHP, you can sometimes accept this, expect this to happen. This is crazy. <laughs> you can have, you see, the the keys uh, are not good, but the orders is, pres is not preserved, but correctly sorted, you know, so the function does what it is pretending to do, except the keys is not completely preserved. So yeah, this will be fixed. Um, uh, into into table sorting and again if you read if you listen to the uh, PHP internal news uh, podcast by Derek Reference, uh, you have Nikita Bobov actually going to explain in a very few minutes actually five minutes how this works and the difference between um, team sorts and stuff like that okay that's just a matter of how you sort your algorithms um, resources most of the time are going to become objects one last in interesting updates on this. Um, as you know, manipulating resources is really hard because it's because of their native implementations. It's part of the language. So no resources will be usable as objects like file manipulation, among all stuff, like GD images, which one image created from JPEG, JPEG or something, or XML parser. This is a work in progress because it's going to be replaced one by one in all the language. Okay, so um, objects are type safe and can be read from information. Maybe later some will offer API exchanges, I don't know, um, like not only getting info but adding actions on the objects written from JPEG or something. Um, this explains to why resource is not a native type proposed by PHP type in the language usage we talked about a few slides uh, earlier. Okay, 
So this can lead uh, this can lead to some BC breaks in the current source code, of course. So yeah, uh, right now you will not check is resource, but just is false is an object uh, object of type whatever you want it to be. Uh, the namespace tokens, this is tricky too, uh, this is very subtle, if you can, in PHP, uh, before 8, you could use white space between uh, namespace items and tokens. Uh, this throws now the syntax error because, for example, this, with a new double at, for example, um, as, a, as an attribute, uh, can be interpreted as uh, this is a backslash b and then a param or something, or this is an A and then backslash B param. So you will have now to explicit which one you wanted to choose, so no more white spaces. And also uh, this means that you can use internal reserve keywords to be used as namespace token like fn for example, function, whatever you want it to be. So it's not something I would recommend because it would be very tricky and harder to read, especially for beginners, but okay. In the end, it's just going to be safer to have no white space. Um, the name arguments is under vote, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be voted. This is weird too. Um, in PHP, when you declare something like functional method call here, you can just give a name to your parameter, uh, and you, you can you can you can uh, say dollar parameter uh, is going to be of some kind like uh, let's say it's an integer so integer uh, int dollar parameter for example and uh, you can also now do the opposite which means like this when you call just like I said call here when you call something function or method call when you call something you can explicitly name with a quotes with anything this is a language identifier and passed as so you can explicitly name which parameter you are binding the, the, the value to, okay, the variable to, or the expression to. Um, some userland components exist, like Symfony Argument Resolver, which is uh, resolving the arguments passed to mostly controllers, I think, uh, so that you can just mix up uh, and shuffle the order of um, everything you pass, but it's passed by the Argument Resolver, which means if I see like um, uh, HTTP request, uh, HTTP foundation backslash request object, and then uh, password encoder interface, they would just know which one is this one, even if you mix them and put the first one, second, and second one first, for example. So this should solve default values arguments and variable arguments, so just to clarify everything. So uh, for beginners, it could be uh, complex sometimes if you want to say, I want to call a function that says parameter A, then parameter B with a default value, then parameter C that can be null, uh, then parameter D, which is mandatory to, again, that, that's very complicated to, um, you know, to, to, to juggle with this one and see how it works, actually. Um, and two more things I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is, uh, and no, actually it's the last one. I'm just out with it actually. Uh, the negative array indexes, I talked about this in previous talks. Uh, this was proposed several times. It's a very old feature of PHP that doesn't count negative arrays indexes properly. Um, so arrays are internally stored by the Zend engine with hash tables and data structures in C. Uh, the indexes can be anything as it's an integer on string. And the Zend engine structures uh, take care of the stored data in memory. So there are three different structures if you want to see how the works, hash tables and uh, Zend table and stuff like that. How you store um, in C a, a structure of dynamic array in PHP. Uh, and PHP tries to automatically detect and determine the next, between commas, uh, valid index when arrays are being pushed unindexed. Uh, this works in a very weird way. So PHP basically ignores negative offsets and starts with either zero or the next positive integer that is not already set and that is superior to the largest found. Let me give you an example. Um, these arrays, array 1, 2, 3, and 4, are exactly doing the same thing. You could have uh, different stuff, like array 5 could be um, array push, for example, and stuff like that. You can have 
very different ways of building arrays, right? So array field minus two, uh, it means uh, build me an array of three cells and the first index should be minus two, okay? And the value should be just true, okay? The second one is saying, I want to define um, an array directly, statically, like minus two, then true, true. And then I want to add some string as an, as a, an, in, um, an offset, an index, and then I want to have minus two and true again, okay? And if you look at this and then you say, um, actually, I'm going to remove this string offset. So this is going to be unset. So in the end, I'm going to do this with one array and then use the array push shorthand syntax here. We can, you can write close to the equal or not. Um, array four minus two, then another one, then another one. And guess what? Before PHP 8, all those four syntaxes are going to give you this. They are going to give you an array with indexes minus two, zero, and one. And this is absolutely not intuitive for people considering PHP can use any relative index uh, uh, um, number as an index. So yes, PHP handles uh, integers and strings as um, array index and uh, it doesn't work like you intended you could I could just add here like um, array four uh, bracket bracket and say uh, or, or bracket uh, minus one or minus three and set it true it would be uh, minus two zero one minus three it would just be the same but in PHP 8 now PHP is going to consider the whole relative ensemble of numbers in uh, mathematics you know not the uh, positive numbers uh, I'm just wondering, it's N with a double bar and Q in the double bar, if I'm correctly reminding my math courses. So yeah, mm. what um, PHP 8 does is basically remove the positive word in the positive index, the next positive index, right? Uh, just to finish a few words, uh, last but not the least, don't forget all the PHP 7.2, 3 and 4 deprecations are going to be rolled out in PHP 8. Um, PHP 7.1 is not really, uh, 7.0 does not really bring any of them or many of them. Um, PHP now uses the semantic versioning recommendation, so major dot minor dot fix, uh, which means minor versions will have BC breaks backwards compatibility breaks. So therefore this time you'll have to triple check your older code. Check for what? I'll give you examples, but you already had these examples. You have to do this with IDE and static analyzers like PHP Storm, Visual Studio Code, uh, generic tools like SonarCube or specific tools like PHP Storm, Storm, Fan, Mess Detector or PHP CS Fixer. Uh, basically, you have to check for many things that were deprecated in the previous versions. I did not include them all. There are many, many of them. Um, and you have to rethink how you're going to do some apps with uh, different stuff. So, for example, you have to check that your concatenations, yes, all of them are correct. Comparisons, yes, are correct. And also the ternary operators need to be reviewed because now they have priority and have to be written in a very explicit and readable way. Please do not chain ternary operators if you can. It's not a bad thing. You can do this, but if you can avoid it, please don't do it. I know it's going to be longer, but please. Uh, also check for double equals everywhere because there was a time where double equal used to be uh, the bad beginner, noob, whatever you want it to be, um, equality check statements. And now it's getting back as the default decent or close to decent double check, uh, simple check you want to do on variables, okay? So uh, review string operations, all the strings have changed. Uh, review how implode works and um, be careful. Callable signatures, which is uh, defining a function, defining a method, defining a trait, uh, defining a class, everything uh, by of callables or entities like objects are going to be much more complex and dense. So if you can picture it, you're going to have, I, I didn't want to add a specific example with everything, but you can have a private, um, st static, final, private function, my function with comments and attributes before, with comments and attributes in between parentheses, with um, um, attributes and um, parameters promotion. It's if, it, if it's a constructor, for example, uh, the constructors are going to be heavily dense and stuff. Good thing there's not much to write in constructors, usually. Um, written types, uh, variadic parameters, uh, promoted, non promoted stuff, 
uh, expressions, uh, default values and stuff, the signatures are going to be real dense. That's the price you pay for being more specific in code. And uh, last but not the least, you'll have to rethink uh, if you're doing apps with extensive calculations, high traffic or very heavy processing, think of FFI, C is not a bad language and you can use it for very uh, basic operations in PHP. Uh, also, you can think of preloading, which is here since 7.4, I think. If you use very common bootstrappers, uh, or if you had uh, hot code maps that represent a majority of call, like um, I would suggest you try Blackfire or PHP Spy if you want to need some tracking in your code and see where the mess happens. Um, or if you use hosting, where you are, you are handling everything, uh, which is hosting that are not shared hosting right if you are shared hosting you cannot preload because most of the time um the web server will be already loaded for you and it would just start shooting on your face uh in a specific directory and you will have no preloading opportunities so yeah um you will have to improve your code quality by making it more readable with less assumptions so don't be afraid of strong constraints uh, they do work and uh, also some um, old ambiguous stuff needs to be rewritten. So uh, yeah, that is what you need to do. So about migrations, let's sum up about migration estimates and opinions. Uh, any C level or product owner will ask about that. How long, how does it do? How are we going to handle this? Uh, well, the answer is um, uh, how, much is the difference because you probably migrated from PHP something to PHP 7, I suppose. Uh, is it harder, similar or easier than PHP 5 to 7? Well, it's not that much of a simplified version to give. I will say uh, for sure 5 to 8 is going to be a lot more work. But if you are under 5, what did you where were you living all those years? I just want to know. This is not old fashioned. This is madness to me. But if you are Whoa, congratulations. I don't know what you're going to do. Um, but I would say it's going to be slightly easier and faster than uh, PHP 7. So why do I say that? Because in the end, um, PHP 7, as we saw, had more structural changes, uh, mostly due to the PHP 6 withdrawal, the hack, HHVM, PHP engine need for reformation, the strategic and polygon things. Um, PHP 8 has little more RFC and changes. Um, PHP 8 and PHP 7 share the same amount of deprecations. Uh, but if you look, PHP 5 had six minor versions, PHP 7 had four. So considering the release cycle and the semantic versioning are now perfect, uh, I would say it's going to be a little faster because PHP 7 was about performance and freshness and PHP 8 is about further uh, deeper moves. It's about cleaning the past and opening to new app profiles. So, uh, if you are, um, if if you are, if you read the PHP 7.2.7.4 deprecation notices, and if you used uh, static analyzers, you are already okay. I mean, if your code works with everything that is under PHP 7.2, um, you're pretty good. If you are no problems and no errors with PHP 7.2, you're good. And if you have the same thing with 7.3, you're very good. And if you say, I'll say that if you are working with PHP 7.4 and you have e all reporting all the errors, everything transparent and you got no errors and it works perfectly and the static analyzers are saying green, 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 let's go. Uh, you are more than ready actually to go to PHP 8. It's going to be very fast to migrate. Um, you can expect PHP uh, stable packages by default in what I would call careful distributions within um, second quarter of 2021. And uh, it always takes like six months for Debian, uh, one year for Red Hat. And if you use um, latest versions or tags like uh, Burster um, for Debian Burster and uh, if you use the Alpine Docker uh, stuff uh, and precise that you want to explicitly use 800 tags or 80 star tags, whatever, it's already available actually. So uh, you can, yes, you can already build Docker images with PHP 8 alpha. Uh, so yeah, most packages, uh, most PHP packages are more than ready, I would say. Um, they are not completely ready, all of them, especially if it's, uh, the votes haven't been complete, but uh, most of them will be. Um, 
And I would say that uh, if you want to know about uh, the uh, platform as a service or uh, VAC will be really ready uh, very early. I think every every single host uh, will be ready and will give you access to those tools uh, very, very rapidly. So uh, if you use, uh, if you want a magic recipe, uh, there's none, but I would say as usual, you need to use uh, to use static analyzers. So uh, which one? Uh, Solm can fix your types. Uh, PHP stand rule level over five, uh, including five, will just give you all the um, chains that I talked about about the chain, the null uh, reference operator. Uh, Fan has migration options to help you check PHP eight explicitly. Uh, you have to work with full error reporting, of course, everywhere, uh, including maybe production for a few days if you want to really test it out in real world. You'll have to um, use unit testing or whatever because it's time to start using unit test for very basic uh, low level performance reasons uh, and migration issues. Um, also, if you use automatic code fixings like uh, PHP CS Fixer, you're going to have much more plugins to PHP CS Fixer soon. Uh, there are many thousands of actually tools to do this. Uh, infrastructure checks, make sure that not all hostings will adopt this instantly, but they should be done very quick. So uh, considering the performance updates, of course, and the need to upgrade. Um, also, um, you need to start using strict norms and constraints, which is strong typing, uh, where relevant, uh, using the, the strict underscore types uh, uh, declaration in every of your file if you want to, uh, etc. If you have normalized uh, environments, like uh, it's time to use VMs or containers like Docker if you want to, because it's more than ever, uh, you will have less surprises when you migrate one thing from, I would say, whatever you call development environment to test environment QA whatever to production. Uh, also read the change log and deprecation list um, in addition to my early presentation and talk if you don't know what to do because this could just wake up some doubts about yourself. Um, I mean you can still go for control find uh, into your whole ID uh, in addition to static analyzers and use up-to-date stubs. Uh, PHP Storm 2020.2 uh, is coming and it's going to uh, integrate all the PHP 8 stuff and you should be fine actually with all that. So as usual, migrating is going to be pressurizing your apps sooner or later. So you have to do this right now actually. Uh, let a few days out so pe people just correct PHP 8.0 very fast for the first bugs they encounter. Um, and PHP will now require you to upgrade more frequently but like I said uh, at the beginning of this presentation it will be easier. Definitely, PHP is faster now, 200% than it was five years ago. It is secure, it is fast, it is scalable, and it is reliable. So, is its ecosystem. The world has changed a lot, and PHP did too. Um, as I'm talking right now, you know, uh, Python 3.7 and PyPy 7.3 rocked Python performance. Uh, Node 14, uh, V8 version 8.0, uh, again changing JavaScript. Um, Go 114 is breaking back in extreme performance if you have very extreme performance needs at the moment. Uh, those are extraordinary times and we're going to have server consumption go lower and server use go higher because applications are growing and people are growing and all the systems are growing. So yeah. Those are really extraordinary times, but this is only the next very close future. In the further future, as you can guess, there will be a PHP 9 versions and PHP 10 probably too, more than probably. Uh, also, don't forget, uh, right now there are still about 30, I would say 30 RFCs, uh, still requests for comments, uh, still being discussed for PHP 8 branch. So maybe some of them will pass by the end of uh, July. Uh, but also that will pass before PHP 9, so there will be many upgrades and new stuff and fixes, and I'll be there, I'll do a presentation, and I will probably tell you the exact same things. Thank you for listening. If you have listened to me for almost two hours, you're really um, resisting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you did. I don't think I could just handle such long time on a long presentation of PHP 8. And also I did slow because uh, I'm not an English speaker natively as you can hear. So 
uh, it's taking a little brain cognitive time to transfer to something quite English and intense for me in my head. So um, thank you very much for being here and for surviving this apocalypse of two hours of PHP 8. I hope you are convinced that uh, it's more than time to be uh, migrating and it's going to be a very, very interesting time. PHP 8 is for sure bringing um, lots of promises and it's doing exactly what we are expecting it to do f since like 2015 actually just in time engine and uh, a new way of handling errors getting rid of many many old weird stuff it's definitely worth to say that the php trolls and the people who were uh, saying bad things about php are definitely wrong and sh if, if you see people um, trying to troll php for some reason you can be sure that they haven't had a look at PHP since 2005 or something like that. So it's pretty good time to be a PHP developer. I think it's going to be interesting in years to come. Um, so this is it. Drop a word if you want it to be with me. Uh, I hope you are uh, appreciating what I did here. And uh, I'll see you up ahead later on. You guys have a nice day. This is COVID time. Take care of yourself. Be very careful. Wear your mask, whatever you want it to do. And uh, be safe. See you. Cheers.